I guess the last thing I'll talk about, talking about old memories, is my first dream I ever remember. And that's pretty cool, being able to remember your first dream, one of my first dreams. I, I had not been to school yet. I, was, I wasn't five. I was probably four, probably very nearly five, actually. And I remember, I don't remember what led up to this in my dream. And I wasn't a, like a fan of sci-fi or anything. I, I wasn't into any sci-fi properties. I was never a fan of Star Wars as a kid. I hadn't even seen Star Wars at this point. I hadn't seen Star Trek or any of those other sci-fi greats that would have elements like this in it. So I don't know where this came from. I was a fan of Toy Story, though. And maybe like some of the Buzz Lightyear stuff was in my head. I don't know. But we were in a car. It was me and my mother. I think we were in a car. Like I said, I don't remember what happened leading up to this, but we had parked on this <laughs> space rock. I guess I'd call it an asteroid now, but it was a planet to me back then. It was very small. Like You might have been able to run around it in an hour or maybe even 30 minutes. It was really small, but there was the only way I know how to describe this. It was like a space gas station there, right? And we were landed amongst this gray dust and these craters out in the distance and this kind of flat part. And she was trying to explain something to me. I was sitting in the passenger seat and she was leaned over trying to tell me how serious this was, saying, until we get in there, and I suppose I should describe the building, it was it had neon, it had a pole with like a neon sign that like, you know, goes around and whatever the name of the place was with a little car on top and then a flying saucer. And then like a above it, like almost as an ornament or a weather vane, there was a big rocket, like a stereotypical little green man rocket with outlined in neon. And then there was the covered part of the gas station, which had pumps, but they weren't like gas pumps I'd ever seen. They were a round, almost spherical, more flat than a sphere, but very round, neon around it, and then like another smaller one of it on top, where you're supposed to refill your spaceship, I guess, I don't know. And then by, beyond that was the actual store, which was very much in the same style, like it had glass windows and a, and a door, but the top of the place where like the roof outline was, it was covered in this reddish some parts of it were pink, <laughs> neon, and it was the only thing on this asteroid. I mean, it was barren besides this. And I think I could remember seeing flying cars or spaceships or something in a highway, like, above us, in between us and the store. And we parked, by the way. I may have said that just now. We parked really far away from this place. It was like a, a thousand feet, maybe. Way further than we should have. And my mom's leaning over the center uh, armrest thing. She's going, now look, this is serious. This is serious. Here's this little device. And to explain what it looked like, you know, the stereotypical mushrooms with the slender white stalk, and then they have the red top with the white, big white dots on it. And if you look at the underside of the cap, it's got those fins or those little membranes that are, or whatever they are. And she was saying, when we get out of this car, Keep this directly above your head. Point it straight up. Do not mess this up or you're not going to have any gravity. You're going to fall off the world. <laughs> However, she said it. And I was kind of scared. Because she had one for her and she had one for me. And we were almost using them kind of like umbrellas. We were holding them directly above our head, the top of our cranium. So we got out of the car and we were holding these things and it was hard to keep it pointed directly up because if it pointed just a little, just one degree out, you could feel kind of your balance would go off and you, your head would start kind of tilting to one side or you'd start trying to stumble to one direction. When I felt that, I was scared, man. And the only way I could keep it standing straight up is when I pointed it straight up and uh, I, then I felt stable. And I remember the way my mom was walking was really strange because she was trying to hold that thing up and keep one hand on my shoulder and kind of stay at my level, I guess, to, like, comfort me. So she was bent almost completely over with her head really hunched between her shoulders and her arms close to her body and her knees bent. I just wanted to get there because I could feel, like, if this thing got too far over and you started stumbling, there was no way you were going to correct it and you were gone. And it, it didn't make me feel nauseous, but, like dizzy in the head. The only 
other way I could explain it, which I should say, this is kind of a nightmare now that I think about it. I was terrified at it when I was that old. But the only other time I felt that feeling, especially when towards the end of the dream, was when uh, I had this later, much later in life, I had this sleeping problem that felt like a hook. Somebody had taken a hook and put it right in the middle of your head. And I mean the middle, middle, like right in between those two halves of the brain, dead in the middle. And they were there was a thousand pound weight on the end of the string on the hook but we were going and making good progress and we were getting there and we were getting a little bit closer and I was just uncomfortable the whole time I couldn't stand it and towards the end I started to kind of get out of control my mom was like trying to hold me closer but I was just stumbling and falling over and I could not no matter what I did keep myself upright and I started to panic whenever I tipped over I said well screw this little device thing whatever it is and my limbs went out in all directions like I was trying to catch myself if I was going to fall and hit the ground. But I wasn't falling that way. I was falling. If you're standing straight up looking level. I was falling straight left and off of that world before I hit the ground or before I got completely horizontal. I woke up. But that feeling of falling is probably what woke me up because it was just like somebody had that hook in the very middle of my head and they were just pulling me that way and I couldn't do anything I remember my hand my wrists especially just uh shaking trying to hold that thing above my head from the not really from the weight of it but just trying to keep it exactly perfectly in line and being really really anxious about it and then I lost control of it and panicked and woke up so that was the earliest dream I remember. And like I said, it was kind of a nightmare. And speaking of nightmares, I'm going to have to have less subjects in one of these because I sit down to talk about three things and I'm already at 50 minutes. So I'll see you in the next one. I kind of want to talk about medical mistreatment in the next one. But those stories are kind of long, so I may just do one of those at a time. Maybe that'll be easier on me to record and edit. So stay tuned.